Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Test Automation Engineer Certification. We are in chapter four talking about the implementing test automation. And as a part of this particular tutorial, we will be getting into the sample questions of this particular chapter and trying to understand what could be the possible ways the examination can trick you around. The very first question we have from this particular chapter is right here on our screen and the question is about which one of the following is an important factor to improve code maintainability. At this point of time, as usual, you should start recalling what is first of all maintainability about and what can help us to improve the code maintainability. The word maintainability certainly stands for the code can be rectified, can be updated, can be modified as and when desirable. That means when the need comes, we should not be stuck with that code which we have written today at you know some point of time uh, after in future. And that's where the maintainability comes into consideration. Now generally, uh, in order to say a code is maintainable, it is written as flexible as possible or in the term of replaceability. When we say replaceability simply means that you have left room in the code that allows you to modify things and replace them for another new code than just getting hard coded. And that's where we can discuss further that what exactly are the different options provided to us and we can make a conclusion on that, that what could be the right answer. In fact, this should be the easy way to handle these type of questions. That is first, try to understand what do you know about it and then look at the option. Never look at the option as a very first attempt. The reason is sometimes these options could be very tricky and diverting as well. So let's get started. The very first option we have for us is uh, defining generic functions with all the necessary parameters. However, this is a good approach, like generic functions with all the necessary parameters. But defining this would help us to achieve the library functions rather than improving the code maintainability. It would help us to reduce our effort in writing the test automation script, but does not help particularly to improve the code maintainability. Option B here says that let developers uniquely name code variables. Name code variables is uh, not something which is meaningful. In fact, uniqueness is not what we are interested in. We want a standard naming convention to be followed as a principle to write clean codes, but even writing naming conventions is not something which is going to help you with the maintainability. It's more a, more a part of learnability that it helps someone else understand what the code is all about. So naming conventions just define a standard pattern of defining your work but does not help you to do maintainability of the code. However, the next one we have is option C. It says use static analysis tools or analyzers to keep the code clean. The word code clean is a good reflection for us to understand that static analysis tools are something which will help you to identify where exactly you have not followed the clean code practices, which are very much important, just like developers for us to keep our code maintainable enough. So it will highlight and detect things related to information which has been hard coded or the information which might not be maintainable over a period of time. And that is where static analysis tool could be of great help to detect such maintainability issues and can help us to improve our code in order to increase the code maintainability. However, we have one more option that is option D and that says hard code values to easily understand their meaning. <laughs> Indeed not. That totally goes right opposite to our understanding of clean code practices that is hard coding certainly doesn't result into maintainability. In fact, that's the right opposite to what is maintainability. And with that being discussed, we are pretty much clear that our right answer for this particular question is C, using static analyzers to keep the code clean would help us as a factor to improve the code maintainability. And that's how we can easily conclude with some of the simple questions to come to the right answer without any doubts and confusions. Let's move on to the next question. The next question we have for you is number two. And uh, this is a little bit of uh, listed pointers, pointers. So we may have to have a little patience before we conclude with our answer. So the question says the senior management wants to implement a task uh, in your organization and asks you to lead this particular initiative. You have been given directions to start a pilot project. Which of the following statement best describes the objective of the pilot project? Again, as usual, you should recall what a pilot project is all about. It is uh, the first project which is going to use your test automation solution 
and uh, we have several objectives as a part of it like we get in-depth knowledge about it understand the uh, process maturity we find out what could be changed in the existing process we stand uh, we define standard guidelines and many more so let's start looking at the options and concluding them as we read them which would result into a very straightforward answer detection so the very first pointer is saying that document the SUD parts which have not been documented during the development see documenting uh, you know SUT parts which have not been documented during the development does not help me with SUT sorry the pilot project of a TAS the question is about the pilot project of a TAS not the pilot project of SUT right so the words even single word could result into a different meaning so we are not talking about testing SUT here we are talking about piloting the task solution which we have provided to the team so of course if it was related to documentation we could have documented things related to tasks but not the SUT and that makes it a little invalid as of now let's compare the other options and see what we can find there the second statement says identify the matrices and measurement methods to monitor the SUT in the production environment identifying the matrices and the measurement methods to monitor the SUT in the production environment is good for measurements of SUT again. SUT is not our subject here. It's more about if we are talking about any element and component related to the task. So it is very, very particular and very, very important for us to understand anything which measures and monitors the solution that is test automation solution is going to be one of my objective for the pilot project. Never get deviated from the objective of the question. It's very easy because these statements are equally good and valid, but with context to SUT, not with context to TAS, right? Let's move on to the third statement. The third statement says here, analyze defects found during the testing of the TAS. Defects, that's a crazy thing, right? If you talk about the control flow or the flow chart of the SDLC of this TAS, uh, test automation solution, we have analysis, design, implementation, testing, then deployment right so we have already been through testing so we have already found the defects which we have related to tasks and then we are going with piloting right indeed why not you may find some of the things which are uh, as a defect related to the task but that's not one of our objective of pilot pilot is never done with respect to finding remaining defects it's more about how well it fits the purpose and does it fulfill the need of the testing or not so Yes, you can find defects. We are not denying that, but that's not one of the objectives of having this being done. We have option number four here. So option four says, evaluate licensing options and corporation rules. That's something interesting to worry about, but the way it is written is not something which is meaningful or sometimes it could be very distracting saying that, hey, this cannot be the right answer, right? Evaluate licensing options and corporation rules. Indeed, indirectly, they are trying to tell you that we are talking about if there are any kind of licenses which are required, how exactly these licenses would be used. And corporation rules is indirectly referring to the organization policies, compliances, and yes, they are pretty much important for us to consider during the piloting of the tasks. Because during that use, we will see whether the project allows us to use those tasks or not, and whether task fits their purpose. And the interfaces, right? If you deep dive and correlate to that of what we have already discussed, as you interface with a SUT, there might be certain limitation that what the task can interact with, what the task can collect, what the task can store, all that are sometimes very much related to the compliances. And compliance may restrict your task for those purposes. And these we can only understand when we start interacting with the task SUT, that is during the pilot. And if I see the option five, option five says, uh, Select the most suitable commercial off the self or open source tool because TAS would give a real time implications or real time implementation. And that is where it would help you to remember or understand that uh, what kind of components are not so relevant to that of their purpose. So, of course, you would have designed, you have requirements, you have given the best solution possible. But sometime when you roll them out, when you start using them, then you realize these are not the perfect fits. So you may look forward to understand them and remember this could be taken other way around as well that you pretty much understand the use of the task from the perspective of fitting the purpose and if the fit the purpose is not understood or not fulfilled 
we look forward to alternatives to best fit the purpose. And that's where these two statements would make sense. And in that context put together, the right answer for this particular question is D, that is 4 and 5, are valid objectives of the pilot project, which includes evaluate licensing options and corporation rules and select the most suitable commercial of the self or open source tool as a part of it. So that's pretty much what we had from this particular tutorial team. We shall be getting started with our next chapter in the next tutorial and we'll discuss on some more concepts related to test automation engineer. So that's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.